How we doing? What up, boys? Just your friendly degens back at their friendly casino, the hideaway. On a happy, friendly Tuesday night. <laughs> We're playing a little 510 action tonight, bumping it up in stakes. See Dealer's choice, 1020. Uh, ready up. We feel ready. We played TCH Live once. We can do whatever we want now, right? Just got <clears throat> ran over, so. <laughs> um, actually, we're trying to fight back after um, after that winning session, after a couple bad sessions, you know, ready to, ready to run it up tonight. Back at the hideaway, our favorite place. Running one, two, like the good old days. We'll see if we can run it up. Time to call some turns this time, baby. Let's go, and maybe win some showdowns. Ooh. Ooh. Peace. First hand for me, we got ace, queen of clubs in the big blind. There's an under the gun straddle and under the gun plus one limps. When it folds to me, I raise it up to $15 in both the under the gun straddler and the limper call. So we're going three ways to a flop out of position, but the flop is a pretty favorable one to quote Andrew Nimi. King, 10, nine, all clubs. We pick up the royal flush draw, ladies and gentlemen. It's an interesting spot because I'm, I have the nut flush and I'm blocking the second nut flush. Obviously there's one straight flush combo, but I have a lot of this board locked up. So I elect to check here under the gun checks and under the gun plus one bets $30. Music to my ears. Now the question is call or raise. And I think we want to just call here. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, hands like two pairs sets from him. I don't know if they're gonna be able to call call a re-raise here. I wanna keep ranges wide. So I just flat and under the gun folds. So we are going heads up to a turn, which is the six of clubs. Definitely a scary card for him if he has a hand like a straight, a set, a two pair, a top pair. So I check and he does check it back. The river is another interesting card in the five of clubs. Now the board itself is a flush. And I think this is a great spot to go polar here and bet pretty big. I have under rep my hand throughout the course of this hand. Um, so I'm gonna bet big. And I think I should be betting even bigger than the $75 I bet into a pot of around 100. I think I could pot it here, honestly, looking back in hindsight. But I just go for 75, not essentially polar, so I can improve upon that, but a pretty big bet. Call. Call. Oh, I'm not sorry. <laughs> and he snap calls, guys. He snap calls. We flip over the goods. He says he flopped a straight. So but honestly, I think I think we get a good chunk of value here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I'm content with this. We don't hit the royal, but we win a nice pot. We're back throwing in the staple fix of Omaha once or twice per vlog. We looked down at a nice one. Queen of spades, ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, and the ten of diamonds. So not a bad hand. We see a limp from under the gun, and under the gun plus one bets $20. Middle position calls and the hijack calls, and I decided this is a pretty good spot to isolate, so I repop it here for $100, which is the current pot size. And it folds back around to under the gun plus one, who ultimately makes the re-raise. He repots it here, which is around $225. Middle position was short stacked and now calls all in for a total of $65. Here, I think it's a pretty clear call. Most of the time we're gonna be chopping here because oftentimes he's gonna have aces here. Uh, I call and we're off to a flop. Come on, Jello, come on. He actually flips over aces as well. However, he has ace nine four. So we are slightly ahead here. So we're off to a run out and we see a flop of queen six king. Pretty scary board for me because he picks up the nut flush draw. However, I have a pair there. So any two pair or another queen gives me the better hand. However, the board runs out four seven, pretty dry, no draws get there and we end up chopping it. Pretty big pot, happy to take down half of it. We get into a tricky spot later on in the session in a big O, which is five card Omaha high hand. I had just rebought and sat back down at the table and immediately called a flop bet, uh, went four ways to a flop, flop top set, and the cutoff pots it here for 110. I make the call here. I have an open-ended straight draw as well as top set. There are a lot of turns that could give me the best hand. And then it folds around and we are heads up to a turn, which is the dud four of diamonds. He re 
repops it again here for a pot bet of around 370 which has me covered I've got 185 behind and it's a tough decision here I don't really know the math all in my head at once which is why I should have stayed away from these hands in the first place this isn't a type of player that would be doing this necessarily with much other holdings besides the nuts and so I have a decision to make here. I am getting about two and a half to one on pot odds, which means I only have to be right about 28 to 30 percent of the time. However, if we see here on this chart, we're actually winning about 33 percent of the time here with the four card Omaha predictor. I couldn't find a five card predictor. If you guys have any, let me know in the comments. I uh, would love to see those and learn a little bit more. I end up making the fold, which is a slightly negative play in the long run. Uh, yeah, bad fold. I'm getting wrecked today. To make it even worse, the dealer does decide to flip over the river just to show everyone. And it was the eight of diamonds. So, so the board would have paired. I would have hit my full house and would have scooped that entire pot. That's a sad one. A little stab to the heart right there. Uh, we'll make it back in the long run. To start the session off, we look down at a pretty hand. It's 8-7 of diamonds in the small blind. We see two early position players make a limp to $2. Middle position bumps up to 12 Button calls. In here, I'm um, deciding to just make the call here. I don't want to 3-bet as a bluff with that many players in the middle. So the big blind calls behind me, and both early position players come along. So going to a flop 6-handed, which comes 10-7-6. We flop pretty well. We have that backdoor flush draw. We've got the, the gutter to the straight, and we have a pair. So when he bets $45, it doesn't seem like I should do anything here besides just make the call. The player in middle position could easily have an over pair. King 10, Ace 10, Jack 10. I'm a lot of cards that I am losing to, but I can catch up to them on the turn in river. So that is why I do decide to just make a flat call here for $45. I'm getting the right pot odds, and uh, I'm ready to just go see a turn. And that bet actually does get the rest of the field out of there. So we're going heads up to a turn card, which does improve us a little bit. It is the five of clubs. So now we have that open-ended straight draw and we have our pair. Now middle stream player bets $65 and we're gonna do a little bit of math here. So in my head, I'm thinking uh, the pot's around $240, the bet's around 60, so I'm getting four to one. That means I need 20% equity if I wanna make this call profitably. And now I think about what outs of mine are probably live. Um, I think trip sevens um, in my head will probably be good, so that's two outs. And then I have um, four nines and four eights. So over pairs, I'm obviously gonna get there with the straight. After after making a call here on the turn, which I'm fine with, we go off to a river, which is the two of spades. So absolute dud and a half. And now as I'm taking time, um, I, I definitely know I am not winning this hand if I check it back to him. I don't think he's ever going to be bluffing on the flop into six people. So now it's about thinking what hands he would be betting flop in turn for value. And I think that's going to be ace 10, king 10, pocket jacks through pocket aces. And um, I have just the perfect stack size to put all those hands to a test. I just don't think he's gonna have too many calling hands. And I decide to rep eight, nine here myself and jam it all in for a pot size bet, $290. Um, I really don't see a hand that he could be calling here with ever, unless he did raise with eight, nine suited. I got the blocker to the straight. I got good cards as removers. I'm blocking pocket sevens. So that's also a good thing. Definitely should be checking the river here majority of the time. I mean, almost every time and just giving up on the hand. But nope, I go for the spectacular and rip it all in, hoping my tight table image works out for me. Nope. Mr. Player makes the call and we flip over the losing hand as he shows pocket tens for top set and we lose a massive pot. That was actually my biggest bluff at a 1-2 game to this date. Now, looking back, you guys are all going to call me pretty terrible, but um, I'm not going to be too hard on myself. I went for a bluff, and you know what? It didn't work out this time, and there's just no way he's going to be calling with just ace-10 there. So, unfortunate, guys, that we lose a big one to start this session off. Before I can even get tilted after that last punt and a half, we look down at pocket aces, folds to the button, he raises to 15, and I go for that angry tilt raise. 
post bluff getting called out and I bumped it up to a big size to $70. Like I said, I smacked it down trying to look tilted. Obviously, I've got a very strong hand here and our plan's working out as the big blind cold call $70, which shows a lot of strength here. After the early position players limp and fold, the button fold as well. We're going to a flop, which is the pot's already $170. And it comes 866. Um, like I said, I try to make this look like I was tilted. Because the board's so dry, I don't think I can bet for value here. I decide to check here and give him a chance to bluff. I'll let you guys watch through what happens after I make a check. He tosses his chips immediately in the middle. I snap quicker than you can ever make a call. We're going off to a turn in river. Okay, the backdoor spades get there. Not horrible. He hasn't flipped over his cards yet as I show pocket aces. And he tosses pocket sevens, boys. And we lose another one back to back hands. So before I can even get mad at the first one, I lose my stack again. So getting stacked back to back hands is pretty ugly. And this time I actually had the goods and we ended up getting rivered. So that was just a cooler on that one. And boys, we have a lot of chips to try to make up for after this horrible start to the day. This hand, we looked down at five, six of diamonds in the cutoff. There's an under the gun limp, jello in middle position raises to 10. The hijack calls, I call, big blind calls, limper calls. We're going a lot of ways to a flop of six, eight, two, two spades, one diamond. We pick up middle pair, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. Not the best, but multi-way, we're obviously going to proceed with caution. Interestingly enough, checks to me, and I check as well. We are going to a free turn, and the turn is pretty cool. It's the nine of diamonds, giving us now a gut shot to a straight flush draw, going along with a flush draw and a straight draw. We still have our pair as well. When it checks to me again, I'm really not getting the sense that anyone's too interested in the hand. And as I have a made hand and I'm working on a better made hand, I'm going to put some money into this pot. Uh, I think it's fine late position. I bet $25 and it folds all the way to um, the hijack who makes the call. So we are now heads up going to a river, which is the seven of clubs, which is a pretty interesting card and that now we have a straight, but a 10 would obviously make a higher straight. So we do improve, but it's a weird spot. He bets $65 into a pot of 101. I'm trying to think of what tens he would be calling with on the turn jack ten of spades would be the only combo that really gets there i feel like this is a board that is going to favor the drawing hands range over my seemingly value betting range on the turn so he could be taking that into consideration when he bets there as this card is going to be very scary for all of my pair hands two pair hands so all in all i end up making the call here that'll do it man he says nuts and shows jack 10 offsuit with just one spade. So he was not getting the correct pot odds to call, but he did squeak out value for me on the river. Rosie looks down at a bad hand and obviously makes a fold. Middle position opens it up to $12 and the hijack calls. It folds around to me in the big blind and I make the call for 10 more dollars. We're off to a flop of six ace ten two spades i check to the aggressor middle position fires fifteen dollars the hijack thinks about it for a second before ultimately making the call and i see no other reason here than to just flat call as well and assess a turn the turn comes a queen of clubs and kind of an awkward card for us i just check again to the aggressor thinks for a while and stacks out chips to a sizing of fifty five dollars this causes the hijack to go into the tank. He thinks about it for a while and with me left to act still, he ultimately decides to make the fold. After he makes a fold, I think about it for quite some time here. I had seen him earlier, actually the first hand he sat down, he punted off his entire stack, bluffing away from a missed flush draw. And he was on tilt here and so I think a lot of times he does have bluffs in his range here. I'd seen him bluff into two opponents before. So for those reasonings, I make the call for $55 more. The river comes the three of diamonds so it doesn't change much and again I decide to check to him and it takes about half a second after I check for him to snap jam he rips it all in I only have about 115 behind he has me covered so a lot of times he does have bluffs that three doesn't really change much so if I thought I was good on the turn I'm most likely good also on the river 
I go into the tank here, and considering his play that he made earlier in the session, and also I am on tilt, I've had a pretty crappy session so far, I've been losing a lot, I want to win a pot, I don't want to let this one go on the turn like I did in the Omaha hand and lose a bunch of money. Ah, oh, this is such a tough spot, 115 to win 313, that's a pretty good price there, and for those reasons alone, I toss in the call. He's happy to flip his cards over and he shows King Jack for the turned nuts. I was right on the flop that he was probably bluffing, however he got there on the turn and drilled his gutter. Not a good hand for me, I think that a lot of turns he's going to continue on that aren't even good cards for him, so a lot of times he could be bluffing this spot too. Here was a little tilted punt for you guys. I muck my cards and we give up again our entire stack. Time to rebuy for I think our third bullet. Shit. Last hand for me we look down at pocket kings in the cutoff. There are two limps. I make it 15 to go and we get four callers. So clearly in this 1-2 game we might need to be up in our raise sizes. We're going five ways to a flop in position which comes 993 rainbow. It checks to me and I'm actually curious what you guys think. Is this a c-bet spot? on a super dry board five ways. So I'm not sure. I elect to check to keep everyone in. I'm not gonna really be scared of any turn cards to be honest. Um, the turn is the four, it is the second spade, and now the small blind leads out for 20. Folds to me and I make the call. The river is potentially one of the worst. It is the three of spades. So now the board is double paired and the backdoor flush gets there. To make matters even more interesting, he leads out for $25 into a pot of 100. So we are now getting 5 to 1 on a call. And I'm trying to think about what we can actually beat here. Um, everything really got there. A 9 has boated up, 3 is boated up, backdoor flush gets there. Would, would a hand like 10s, jacks, and queens be possible for him to have wouldn't he would he three bet those from the small blind could he be thin value betting with eight seven sixes fives hands like that that are still better than playing the board could he be bluffing me off a chop with ace high i don't know i think there's enough in what i just said to where i can make this call especially given the pot odds we're getting i make the call Dude, take my money he does flip over pocket sevens, so not sure if that was a bluff or a thin value bet, but nevertheless, we take down a nice pot and end right up $1 on the session. A win is a win, boys. Oh, I hope this is the last time you see this hand on this vlog. Two seven of hearts, and yes, we're getting in a vlog worthy hand with that hand. Oh boy, under the gun and cut off limp. I'm in the big blind. I check, guys. I check. I don't do anything. I check. And the flop comes pretty spectacular. Two three three, great for me. So I bumped up to ten dollars, and this gets snap raised from an early position player to thirty five dollars. This player um, has actually played every single hand uh, since sitting down. He's been very aggressive. He has been getting very good hands. He's made about $1,000 in his first 30 minutes, so when he's raising me to $35, no chance I'm going to be folding here because he should never really have a three calling from earlier position. So so for that reason, the only thing he's going to have here is beating me are over pairs, and he's going to be raising those before the flop majority of the time. So that's why I do make the call on the turn. And after the jack of hearts comes, I check in flow to the aggressor, and he snap checks it back. So now I'm definitely putting him on a flush draw here or draw of some. I check again the river to what is a seemingly unconsequential uh, five of hearts. And now the early edition player pots it to $75. So we have here what's called a polarizing bet. He's either got something really strong or he's betting with absolute air. And I just know that obviously my two is just an absolute completely bluff catcher. Jack should not um, hit his raising flop range here very often. Neither should the five. So for the reason that he's screaming miss flush draw, um, I don't like it. Trust me, I don't like it. But um, I'm tired of getting picked on and I'm tired of just running bad. I'm tired of folding. Um, I'm tired of a lot of things this session. So I do make the call and he flips over five six of spades So he had the gutter to the straight flush 
We were beating him on the flop, we were beating him on the turn. And of course, I could have gotten away from the river if a spade comes because the obvious flush draw gets in there. But because the disguised straight draw gets in, I end up losing the maximum. That's just kind of how the session was going, guys. Um, I didn't play good holding them. Um, I made some loose calls. Hopefully we get some run good in the future to counteract this horrible run of cards tonight. What's up, boys? How we uh, doing? Wrapped up this session. We left Jello in there as he's still battling it out. He's down a little bit, but Rosie, how about you start us off? Um, you know, it was uh, this was a real a big needed a morale booster for me. I only won one dollar in for three fifty out for three fifty one, but just being able to check a win column for me is good, so I'm content. That's good news. Um, I cannot count a win. I'm actually going to count a very, 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 very big loss: seven hundred and fifty dollars down the drain. Um, yeah. So, gonna get back at it next time. Hopefully we don't lose that much next time. We'll be back. We're gonna keep learning, keep getting better. We'll talk to you guys later. Please, we need to get better. Buy the merch, we need it. Please buy the merch. <laughs> Please buy the merch, I'm, I'm losing a lot of money. Yeah. Wow. So that session didn't go as planned. Punted off about three bullets for you guys. Hope, hopefully you guys found those hands entertaining. I didn't find them too entertaining because I couldn't win them, but that's okay. Uh, we'll get them back next time. One of my biggest losses ever recorded in my life tonight. Uh, so pretty sad time for me. Uh, we'll see you guys back with the next vlog. Don't forget to follow our Instagram and check out the merch. Uh, all that information is going to be in the, in the description below. And we hope you guys have a good one. From, ne from Jello from NextGen. Peace!